Hello and welcome to this webinar, which is part of our Bite Size webinar series. Today I'll be talking to you about the European Pollutant Release and Transfer Register reporting, or EPRTR reporting. My name is Kerry Hammock and I'm a consultant with the Compliance People, and today I'll be talking to you about the key parts of EPRTR. So in this webinar we will cover what the EPRTR is and why it's required, who has to report and the key dates, what has to be reported, how to report and what happens after reporting. Throughout this webinar there will be various references to EU legislation, so before we start it's useful to explain what has happened to this legislation following the end of the Brexit implementation period. In order to avoid a sudden and dramatic change in regulation for businesses in Great Britain, the European Union Withdrawal Act 2018 provides that all EU regulations previously enforceable in the UK up to the end of the Brexit implementation period are copied into law in Great Britain, so that's England, Scotland and Wales. Essentially, this means that from the 1st of January 2021, there will be two versions of EU regulations. So there'll be the original EU version, which will be unchanged, and the new GB version, which applies the regulations solely within Great Britain. And these versions are known as retained EU law. GB versions of EU regulations will temporarily be identical to the EU versions, apart from the amendment sections, which includes any amendments made to EU regulations by UK regulations that take effect after the implementation period completion day. This means that currently there's no change in reporting requirements to the EPRTR. So what is the EPRTR? Well, the European Pollutant Release and Transfer Register is a publicly accessible electronic database that provides key environmental data on emissions and transfers of waste from industrial facilities in European Union member states, as well as in Iceland, Liechtenstein and Norway. It compares pollutant releases within industry and with releases in the UK and Europe. The requirement to report was brought in so that the UK complies with EU regulations. It is based on EC regulation on the implementation of a European Pollutant Release and Transfer Register and implements the obligations of the PRTR protocol, but with a wider and more comprehensive scope. It goes beyond the requirements of the protocol by covering more pollutants with often stricter release thresholds. It covers 91 substances released to air, land and water from industrial installations in 65 different sectors of activity. And it also includes transfers of waste and wastewater from these facilities to other locations, as well as data on emissions caused by accidents on site. Substances include greenhouse gases, other gases, heavy metals, pesticides, chlorinated organic substances and other inorganic substances. And the first reporting year under the EPRTR was 2007. It helps to facilitate discussions and public participation in environmental matters and decision making, linking environmental rights and human rights, access to information and public participation in line with the ARIS Convention. Essentially, it helps to support the prevention and reduction of pollution. So who has to report? Well, operators of particular activities above specified capacity thresholds. So these are 65 different activities which cover 10 major sectors. And these are activities and thresholds which are largely determined by European reporting requirements. Most reportable activities will require an environmental permit and are regulated as installations under the Industrial Emissions Directive. These include most Part A processes as defined in the Environmental Permitting Regulations, together with any directly associated activities. So these are usually the bigger industrial activities which cover things like energy, minerals, metal, chemicals, waste management, food and drink, and paper, paper and pulp. But it also includes nuclear installations, marine caged fish farms, 
um, all sites having a waste management license with a capacity to accept at least 50 tonnes a day for the disposal of non-hazardous waste and sites with a capacity of receiving 10 tonnes a day or more for the recovery and disposal of hazardous waste. You may hear the requirement to report called various different things. For example, EPRTR reporting, pollution inventory returns or PI returns, emissions inventory reporting and others. Essentially these are all the same things, they just have different names depending upon the regulator requesting the information and which jurisdiction you are in. And it's a key thing to remember that you must report data on pollutants from the previous year, not the current year. On the slide here you can see an extract from Annex 1 of the EPRTR regulation where the activities that are required to report are listed. Operators must report information on annual releases and offsite transfers if you operate a facility which undertakes an activity that's listed here in Annex 1. And the level of emissions exceeds the particular thresholds that are set. Operators are required to report annually on these releases and offsite transfers from the previous reporting year and therefore should consult Annex 1 to identify whether they're affected by the associated reporting obligations. Under the European Pollutant Release and Transfer Register Regulation, Member States are required to report data to the EPRTR by the end of March each year, so the Register website can be updated. The dates you can see up on the slide here now should be used as a rough guide as they vary between regulators and when they want things to be submitted. This particular one here is based on Natural Resources Wales reporting requirements, which use the same online system as local authorities do for reporting. The regulator will send you a notice when the date is due for reporting, but this can often be issued late, so it's best to work to the above timescales to ensure that the data is ready. Essentially, you need to have the data completed by the end of March. This next slide shows what must be reported under EPRTR. However, before you identify what must be reported, you're meant to look at your facility as a whole and work out all potential releases of pollutants from site. And this can take quite some time and requires a good knowledge of site processes and the existence of any monitoring regimes. However, it's good practice to review this, particularly if processes change on site and it will help you to clearly identify releases and off-site transfers. You need to identify the site, so that's the site boundary, all of the installation, including any directly associated activities. So these may be things like effluent treatment plants that are part of your activity, but aren't part of the main installation. So you need to report releases from the facility. So this is releases to air, water and land. And within this, you'll need to report the quantity of the pollutants. You'll need to report any off-site transfers of waste water. And you'll also need to report any waste that's left site. So this is both hazardous and non-hazardous waste and includes waste that's been recovered and disposed of within the country of origin and also any that may have been exported abroad for recovery or disposal. A range of sector specific guidance has been produced to help you complete the EPRTR reporting and it's available on the appropriate regulators website, depending on the jurisdiction in which you're in. It's worth a look as it sets out potential pollutants from each activity or sector and their potential sources and provides some useful guidance on reporting and how to monitor. The link on the slide here is for the Environment Agency's reporting guidance notes and is a useful starting point if you're required to report. So how do you go about reporting? Well, as I've mentioned, you have to report any EPRTR specified pollutants that are emitted. And each of these pollutants will have a threshold value. And you can check these on the DEFRA website, but this isn't always necessary if you're doing the return online, as it tells you how to hover your mouse over the pollutant and the threshold will pop up. And the things that are reportable are substances which are considered to be environmentally significant and of interest to the public. And each pollution also, also has different threshold values for emissions to land, air and water. 
You'll be required to report what measurement technique you've used. So this is how you've calculated the emission using a formula or say you've measured it using equipment or perhaps it's been estimated. And you also need to report the method and the description of that method. So this is essentially how you've measured the emission and you need to describe that with some text when you report. The example on the left here shows you more about the thresholds and how you need to report. So if the figure is ART, so above reporting threshold, then you'll need to record the actual figure of that emission. However, if it's BRT, below the reporting threshold, you do not need to enter the data onto the system. This can be a little bit confusing, particularly as some of the guidance associated with each regulator's online reporting system does say to report all emissions, even if they are under the threshold. However, we check this with local authorities and you do not need to report figures if under the thresholds, as these are below threshold values and the data is not legally required to be submitted to the UK PRTR. So what happens once you've reported? Well, you've submitted the required data onto the online reporting system as required by your regulator. And then once submitted, the regulator will check for any errors or omissions and they may get back to you and want more detail or clarification around particular figures. They may also ask for justification of emission values during any routine site audits or inspections as part of their normal regulatory work. So it's really important that you keep any paperwork or documents, including details of measurements or calculations for a minimum of five years. And this is detailed in the regulations, so it's important to do this. The data submitted is also used in research and to fulfill European Union reporting requirements. And the data is made publicly available online. So it's possible to search by sector or find out the emissions data for particular businesses. To summarise them, the European Pollutant Release and Transfer Register is a publicly accessible electronic database which provides key environmental data on emissions from particular industrial facilities. Annex 1 of the EPRTR regulation lists which industrial activities are required to report this data. And the data that is required to be reported is releases to air, water, land, and also off-site transfers of waste and waste water. The regulator will send you a notice when this data is required and when it's due. However, it's useful to bear in mind that this notice can sometimes be issued late, so it's best to gather the data throughout the year and keep it up to date, ready to submit. So that brings us to the end of the webinar. Thank you very much for listening. We've got lots of further resources available on various topics on our website. If you'd like to have a look for some more information and assistance with various topics. We also have a FAQ document that we've produced on the EPRTR if you have any further questions about it. And our consultants are also available for assistance with reporting and any requirements you might have from your regulator. Thank you. Goodbye.